Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Eplash and today we are going to talk about armies that need updated models. Why I think that spreading the focus on multiple armies and away from space wings could be lucrative for GW and which models I would consider updating most. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing as well as checking the links down in the description below. It helps a bunch. All right, let's get into the video. So, as we know, almost every 40k army is left in the dust unless it was re-released or updated in between 2015 or 2017 or later. Like the Death Guard, for example. These models look insanely good, they are very detailed, and probably some of my favorite scouts in all of Warhammer 40k. These days we see new Space Marine kits day in and day out, with some outliers here and there, but mostly Imperial models get updated and they get new entries into existing rosters. Let's talk a little bit about the positive things that have happened lately before talking about the bad and the ugly. So as you have probably already noticed in the video title, in this video we will be focusing on the Imperium as well as the recently updated ranges from the Imperium to just go and glance over them to give a better idea of the current Imperium ranges and what they have to offer. In the other two videos, we'll go over Chaos and Xenos as well, to round out the whole section of Warhammer 40k. First, let's go over more or less recent updates GW has released before going into the Imperium section of the models. The positives will obviously include all the factions, just to have that all in one video. The first thing I could talk about is being armies re-released that were previously just a paint scheme or conversions. Like for example, Thousand Suns and Death Guard. Usually you would back in the day just have one specific kit for Thousand Suns and Death Guard or you would have an upgrade sprue and everything else was just you paint your army in, in a green or in a blue with gold and that's basically it. But I think re-releasing them uh, with their own specific scarves and their own codex is a brilliant move from GW to give Chaos a little bit more than just the Chaos Space Marines and the Chaos Demons codex, considering how important Chaos is in the grand scheme of things in Warhammer 40k. The Thousand Suns and Death Guard scarves are some of my favorites out there, and even the regular quote-unquote Chaos Space Marines have received a bunch of updated models not too long ago. But don't get me wrong, I understand that these ranges are rather small, especially the Death Guard and the Thousand Suns range, and that they could use a couple of additional kits here and there to add a little bit more variety and a few more options to those specific armies. Furthermore, the recent Necron update was amazing. After years and years of silence around Xenos, with a few separate releases like something like the Orc Vehicle update from 2018 or 2017, we are finally getting something truly big. So far, the Necron update has been brilliant, with the only downside being that GW didn't replace all the Finecast kits. I would love to see Finecast gone completely by around 2025, which is being gracious, I think. The idea would be obviously earlier, but as it stands, Finecast seems to be here to stay, judging by all the Necron and Drukari models that have not been updated, despite them getting a new codex. The only Finecast model I have bought in the past 5 years was Lilith, because I prefer her old model over the new one, and even Finecast is not enough to get me to buy the new one personally. But they can't all be winners. Another thing I wanted to talk about are the new orcs. Obviously we are having previews day in and day out about new beast snaggers or regular orcs, especially the new orc boys, and they are a point of contention but obviously getting updated models is generally a good thing unless the kit then gets very, very expensive. But the thing I've seen people talking about the most is that the new orcs, especially the beast snaggers, don't look very goofy. They look a little bit more serious and people are not sure if they like it or not. So if you have any opinion on that, I would be interested to read your opinion on the new beast snaggers and if you prefer a little bit more serious orcs or if you like your orcs little bit more goofy. The last two things I wanted to talk about are the Sisters of Battle and the Massive Primaris update from back in 8th edition. The Sisters of Battle were long overdue for a complete overhaul and it seems they are selling so well that they are receiving a bunch of new models each and every time they are in the spotlight. Usually armies like Drukhari or Death Guard get 
one, two, or maybe three models if you are lucky. The Sisters of Battle received somewhat in the realm of six or seven new kits, which is insane. But I think it's deserved. The models sell well. The army is great. The army plays well. And I do think that the current modern Sisters of Battle are some of the best design-wise GW has brought to light. To be honest, the Primaris release needs no explanation. You either love it or hate it. But the whole range is not only getting updated, but flooded with new models. It even gets to the point where models are so similar, they fill the exact same niche in between. And we are only talking about Primaris here. Honestly, looking at AdMac as well, with awesome models, and they have been getting new and crazy stuff with the last Psyching Awakening, I think it was Engine War in specific. Great models, especially the Flyer, just all around AdMac very weird, but very cool at the same time. A lot of new models, a lot of positives. We went over a lot of stuff. And as I said, GW, especially recently, is trying to add a little bit more to the Xenos faction, which I highly appreciate. Obviously, there is still the corps that are Eldar, like literally the corps. It's just an army no one wants to get into because the models are so bad. But I think GW is taking their time with them. I also think, that's my speculation, that Eldar are going to release last with a big boom. Ideally, with the start of 10th edition as the main antagonist to the new other space marines. All right, so this video was supposed to be about the Imperial armies. So let's talk about them. The Sisters of Battle and the Primaris Rangers are obviously great, but the Imperium, let's face it, is nothing without the Guard. So let's talk about them first. All right, so the Imperial Guard, funnily enough, has received a small update in that their regular Guardsmen have received an additional update sprue, but they increased in price, making the Imperial Guard even more expensive to collect than they already were. So everything has a drawback, and that's something I wanted to throw in there because going into detail a little bit further. Because what do you think about GW updating older kits to new models? Because generally having nicer looking models is always great, but a lot of people are on a budget or they like the old style and the charm of the old models. So what I would be interested to know is, do you think it is worth it to have a model or a range updated that you really like, but in turn have to pay quite a bit more to receive the same amount of models? Because that seems to be happening. Ever since GW has started updating all the ranges, and I think that the same thing will happen with Orc Boys, and the same thing happened with the new Guardsmen, which received an update sprue, is that they are going to get more expensive. And it's usually between three and five pounds, but if you need 90 Orc Boys or 60 Guardsmen, that is going to add up very quickly. So I would be curious to hear what you think about the whole new models versus them getting more expensive and thus the army is getting insanely expensive to collect thing. Drop it in the comments, I would like to discuss it there. Now, when it comes to the upgrade sprue, generally speaking, I do agree with GW and uh, let's say one half of the Imperial Guard fans that the regular bodies do look kind of timeless for the Imperial Guard. They have the correct size, especially now that the Primaris got updated and a lot of other models are getting updated like Orcs when it comes to size. And the only big thing that looks terrible on older models, you can see it especially in the Eldar Guardian set, are the regular bear faces. They look terrible and they age very, very badly. Another thing I wanted to talk about are the speculations that we are going to get the Death Core of Creek in plastic anytime soon. That would be a cool thing, but I do also think that Death Core of Creek is a very specific flavor of the Imperial Guard, and I don't think everyone likes them. I do know that they are very popular, obviously. They sell very well, despite being one of the most expensive ranges in the Forge World section, but I do think they are not as plain and as a blank slate as the current Cadians are. So, yeah. There's a lot to discuss. That's something I would like your opinion on too. Do you think the Death Call of Creek would be a cool new addition to the Imperial Guard as a whole range refreshed or as a whole additional range? Or do you think that a updated blank slate like Cadia or any equivalent would be a better choice? 
When it comes to the vehicles, I honestly don't think GW will need to update them anytime soon. I personally think they look great. Uh, I think the Lehman Russ, Battle Tank and Demolisher look still very, very good. I do think the Hellhounds are decent as well. The Hydras, especially the Bane Blade, I do not think that they need updates. Especially not to alienate a lot of players who went like a full vehicle list full of tanks in the Imperial Guard list. So all in all, I think the vehicles can stay as they are. I think they look good as is. One thing I do wish DW would offer were update spruce. Like for example, update spruce for vehicles and for the regular troops to make them look like other regiments. Obviously, having the same body as Cadia is a little bit iffy and it doesn't re really represent each and every single regiment as best as possible, but I think it would be a better alternative than not having anything. That's just another idea I wanted to throw in there. Now, when it comes to other armies in the Imperial faction, I do think that Grey Knights do look a little bit dated, especially now that Primaris are so omnipresent and you see them everywhere. And then you take a look at the current Grey Knight range and it does look a little bit dated. But it seems like GW has no intentions to update them anytime soon since they re-released in 5th edition, which is the same edition where the older Necron stuff released, where the Drukhari stuff released that is currently available. And I don't think GW intends to update them quite yet. I do think they want to take their time for at least another five years to wait and see. I do think that the Grey Knights could use a little bit of an update. A lot of people are not a fan of the Dread Knight, of the baby carrier, basically. The design language doesn't speak to everyone. A lot of people are just tolerating it, especially Grey Knight players who are very neutral about it. They just run the model because it has cool rules, it works very well, and it's a nice thing to have in your army. But generally speaking, visually, I do think the Dread Knight would look cooler if it was more of a mech kind of thing, where the pilot is completely inside the, the whole thing. Other than that, the regular troops, I do think Grey Knights look amazing. The helmets, especially for the Grey Knights, look great, but they do look a little bit small and uh, tiny and a little bit more square than the current Primaris and that makes them look a little bit dated. More dated than they probably would look if Primaris weren't a thing. All in all, I do think the Grey Knight range could use an update, but I do understand the decision from GW to wait a little bit longer. Other than that, we have already talked about the sisters. I think the update was a full success. There's not much more to add here. I do think they will slow down a little bit, or I hope they will slow down a little bit with the additional releases for Sisters. I think Sisters have gotten uh, quite a bit of the spotlight recently over the past two years. So I hope other forces and armies will get a little bit of the spotlight as well. Then we have the Adeptus Custodes, which I do think are cool. The updated models and the newer plastic kits look amazing, but I do think the whole Forge World range needs to be either transferred to plastic or have plastic alternatives. Like for example, range custodies should be a plastic kit and it shouldn't be that expensive. Additionally, I do think more vehicles should be in plastic and generally the whole custodies plastic section should get an update. Because as it stands, Fortwood is still very expensive. Working with resin is a thing of its own, cleaning it, assembling it, usually need to, especially for bigger models, work a lot with green stuff and fix things up. Uh, I'm speaking from experience here. So newer players are usually turned off from that and usually run custodies with just their infantry choices and bikes, which is a little bit sad because the custodies range in the lore and generally has a lot more to offer than just infantry and jet bikes. Another thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to the Adeptus Custodes is that I want the Sisters of Silence range expanded and added into the Adeptus Custodes codex because they work very closely in the lore and I think it would make sense to work for them to work very closely in the new book and in the rules as well. So the Sisters of Silence range as it stands is just one singular kit. I don't even know if there's a Rhino updates proof for them. Uh, if there is, let me know. But yeah, I would hope that the Sisters of Silence would get at least 
five kids in total, so they have a little bit more variety that they offer a little bit more to spice things up and to give custodies a little bit more of a cheaper variant on the tabletop to add a few more models on the table if the player desires to do that. We've also already talked about the Adeptus Mechanicus. I don't really have much to add here. I do think the range is amazing. I do think the models they received with Psyching Awakening Engine War look they are some of the best models in Warhammer 40k, let's put it like that. And I do think that generally AdMech players are very, very happy with their range and the visual design of the range and the design language. Weird vehicles, cool robot enhanced, you know, humans, and generally cool cloaks and dune crawlers and dune riders. Everything in the Adeptus Mechanicus range looks solid, it looks updated, it looks modern. Uh, when it comes to miniatures and miniature design. And that's something I really, really appreciate. The last thing on the list are obviously Imperial Knights. I don't really have a comment on them because I don't know their lore. I haven't played a bunch against Imperial Knights, nor have I played with them. But I can say that the range as it stands looks amazing. I'm not really sure what GW could add here. I would very much appreciate if you're an Imperial Knight player or know something about it. Uh, what else could GW do to add there, to offer more variety, and so on? I would really like to learn a little bit more about Imperial Knights. I will read up on them as soon as I find you know, a reason to make a more in-depth video on them and learn more about them. But as it stands, my information on them are very limited, and thus my opinion on them is very reserved. And that's all the Imperial Factions and a little bit of an overview of what GW did well over the past years. The next video will cover chaos, so look forward to that. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.